Hi everybody, my name is Michael Stinger. Today we're going to talk about musical patterns. In everything we've done up to this point, the patterns have been fairly predictable. And in this batch of songs, a couple of the songs are pretty predictable. There's nothing new, it's just a review, a way to get you to build up the coordination between the hands more and more. But there's a couple of examples where the patterns change and it's not as predictable. So we're going to talk about those. For example, if we take a look at the first piece that you're going to play, it sounds like this. Okay, so let's talk about, let's do some really obvious patterns. If we're doing this in a classical style, it might sound something like this. Or it could sound like something like this. Like maybe more jazz or ragtime. But anyway, you get the idea that the melody is in the, in the top hand, but then underneath, there's all kinds of patterns that we can do. Well, a lot of music actually has patterns for a while, and then they change up for a measure or two or for a whole section, or sometimes they never come back to their original pattern. Um, so what we're going to talk about today is just recognizing the patterns uh, on the page so that you can see when something's changing up so it doesn't throw you for a loop. So, for example, if we go back to that classical example, if we do something like this, where the left hand changes patterns one more time, I'll do it one more time slower. See how the left hand broke the pattern and did this? Okay, so that's what we're going to talk about today. So let's look at the first measure of Marching Around. That's the first song in this set, and it's going to be... That's it. So it establishes itself with the left, left hand holding out a long note while the right hand plays the melody. But then in the next measure, it breaks from that, and it goes to something like this. So notice that the top hand is coming down, descending, and the bottom hand is going up, ascending. That's called contrary motion in music. So if we put those two measures together, we have the first measure, and then it breaks, and then it does contrary motion. And then the next measure, it goes back to something more like what we did in the first measure, with long hold in the bottom hand while the, the top hand takes the melody. So this is pretty typical of all types of music, and this is the first time in the books where it really starts to change things up like that. The rest of the pieces are fairly pattern-based. Um, the next one called Say It Again has a few little twists and turns. You just have to be careful and read the notes. Please remember to like and subscribe. Let's take a look how this is going to look with the overhead camera and the sheet music. One, a two, a one, two, ready, go. So do, so do, fa, mi, re, fa, re, fa, re, so, mi, do. All right, let's do that again, and this time sing along with me and play. All of these, except for maybe Sluggish Sunday, um, are ones that you want to sing um, because it'll just help you find your notes faster. So uh, let's try it one more time and do it a little faster. One, two, three. Ready, go. So do, so do, fa mi re, fa re, fa re, so mi do. Practice marching around, say it again, heavy feet, and sluggish Sunday. Practice with the slow practice track until each song feels easy to you. Work your way up to the pro practice tracks. Practice one hand at a time if it's tricky to play them together. For bonus, be able to play each song along with a different song's practice track. For example, play Marching Around while listening to the practice track of Heavy Feet. All the songs can be played at the same time. Remember to like and subscribe for future videos.